It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Imagine what your life would be like if you could replace anxiety with tranquility, self-doubt with self-acceptance, and insecurity with certainty about your life purpose. Today's guest, Joanna Garzilli, says it's possible when you learn how to manifest miracles that lead to breakthroughs in your life. Joanna offers tools to help you activate your genius and cultivate ideas so you can create the outcomes you desire. Joanna is the author of the book, Big Miracles, The 11 Spiritual Rules for Ultimate Success. Welcome, Joanna. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Joan. It's wonderful to be with you today. So, Joanna, if you've written a book about spiritual rules that can help us make positive changes in our life, and, and you say that a big miracle is when we create our ideal life, one that's bigger and better than we ever imagined. It, it's our heaven on earth. And I know many people want to do that, but have no idea how to begin. So what's the first step to creating a big miracle? Yes, and I understand that people wonder the how. From what I see is that life can get quite overwhelming, especially now that we have this added dimension of social media. So the first thing that I would say to be able to even get into the headspace and the alignment where you can go, Okay, big miracles are possible, is to see yourself as a miracle. And, and to do that, there's a couple of things. First of all, that you're more than your mind or your body. You are this energy animated by spirit. When you woke up this morning, you probably didn't think about how you're making your heart beat. You didn't have the concern of, is my heart going to stop beating in this next minute, in this next 10 seconds? You're not thinking, where am I going to get my next breath of air? You don't have to be concerned about how to operate. So I share these things because there's a lot that is keeping us alive and we don't have to worry about it. What if we could expand that faith, that trust, that we're going to keep living, that everything's going to be okay. If we could expand that to the idea for our relationship with our family, with our loved ones, in a romantic relationship, in terms of our finances, in terms of our career, how much more enjoyable life would be. Well, you know, Joanna, at the foundation then what you're saying is that it requires a connection with something bigger. And I think many people have lost that connection. Do you believe that is why there's so much unhappiness and searching going on today? For some people, I feel that they haven't ever made the connection. Mm -hmm. Somehow it has been marginalized. Other things have taken a priority. People feel so overwhelmed. That's the biggest thing I see. People feel either overwhelmed or they feel disheartened by the way that the world is. And yet there is so much beauty in the world. If we look at where we were in terms of resources and different inventions, and I think that a first useful step for people can be to reframe the way that they see things. Mm -hmm. But really, some people were just never educated of how to tap into their instincts, their wisdom, the importance of attuning to their own spirituality. Things have just got lost along the way. So yes, for some people, it's about reconnecting to it. But for others, it is not something that is being focused upon. So Joanna, building upon this, we make this connection and then we need to figure out a way to gain a clear understanding of what it is that we want to achieve. So from your experience, what do you recommend is the best way to set that intention so that we know what direction to take? Well, the, the first thing there is that if you are not aligned, if you don't feel an alignment in yourself, 
then how are you going to feel good about the intention that you set? How are you even going to know if the thing that you want is the right thing for you? There could be a lot of doubt around that. So going back a step, align with spirit. How do you know you're aligned or misaligned? In its most simplest form, you know you're aligned when you feel good. And if you feel bad, then you're misaligned in some capacity. And so how do you get into alignment? I really like this process. Very simple meditation. One can do it more in depth or one can do in its simplest form three steps, which is to center, to ground, and to connect. Being able to close one's eyes, to focus inwards, to bring one's awareness to one's heart, take a deep breath, exhale, let go of the overwhelm, the fear, and just say, I I have access to whatever the wisdom is, the insights that I need. I just need to open myself up to connect to that. So that that is a the simplest form of connecting to one's intention. Of course, in Big Miracles, I break it down step by step, and I, I ask a lot of very specific questions that will help one to go deeper because it's hard to go deeper into ourselves, into our intuition, to trust ourselves, especially if we've made mistakes in the past and especially if we've got a lot on our plate and also if there's a lot of resistance in one's mind, internal programming that just says the inner critic, right? This is no, you can't, you won't, and you don't have evidence already of it in your life. So what makes you think that you can go and do that now? But there has to be that starting point. So I like the idea of focusing on creating a big miracle is a seed within your heart. And you just need to water that seed. But it's hard to water the seed when that soil in your heart is filled with weeds. The weeds don't mean that something bad as such. But there there has to be an acknowledgement of, okay, here's my inner landscape And if I want things to change, if I want to create space for big miracles to happen, I'm going to have to do something differently. And that's where forgiveness would fit in to clear out some of those weeds, forgiving yourself and others. Absolutely. And and I think that it's just coming back to that idea of where is the silver lining? What can be learned from a negative experience? What happens when you're the one that makes the mistake? Because the idea of forgiving mistakes, right, either we're making the mistake or someone else is. And when we make a mistake, carrying the the weight of that can paralyze one from moving forward with the big miracle that they're creating, something that they have in their heart that they're passionate about. And if someone else makes the mistake, it can paralyze you in terms of you feel as if, well, how am I going to go after the thing that I want because everything is against me? or something is wrong. And so in forgiving mistakes, it creates space, space from an energy standpoint to be able to say what can be learned. I think that's the biggest thing from mistakes. And and then it, it takes away a massive amount of pressure. You know, for each person, their idea of mistakes are different. But if we just come back to that rule, it can change everything for us. And it's really important to get ego out of the way. Yes. But there's an important distinction here. Live without ego, which is rule five. There's having a certain amount of ego, I think, is healthy and is necessary. Otherwise, we would never step into the spotlight, right? You wouldn't take the leadership role that you are. Mm. And so a little bit of ego is a positive thing. But when the ego is unevolved, when the ego is saying you can't and you shouldn't and you're not enough or it's judgmental of others, that is when it's a negative thing. And so it's being able to find that balance to be able to say, where am I living with unhealthy ego here? And then what am I going to do? What I think a great way to solve that is to look at what do you need to do for yourself? Where are you depriving yourself of something? And when you find that, that helps you move beyond to transform that unevolved ego into something positive. And Joanna, I believe that growth requires us to move outside of our comfort zone. What's a tip that you can offer someone to take action? When you are focusing on getting outside of your comfort zone, which is rule 11, you don't want to do something that is going to absolutely terrify you to paralysis. I believe that it's doing something that scares you And there's that fine line between fear and where you feel really alive and really present. But do something that you're not good at. 
something where you can come back to having a beginner's mind. For me, one of the ways that I got outside my comfort zone was I went to a singing for actors class. That was terrifying for me because I know that I am not naturally a good singer. I'm not a trained singer. And I remember being in the in the class with everyone and the teacher said is there anyone here who's tone deaf and I really thought I was tone deaf I put my hand up so he did some musical notes and then he asked me to follow the 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 notes I went beetroot red but I I did it and he said you're not tone deaf you just you just haven't been taught how to sing and I think it's like that for so many for, for so many of us in different areas of our life. We all start off where we have to learn. And that's the power of getting outside of our comfort zone is it allows us to unearth talents within us and to cultivate skills that can be so richly rewarding, not only for ourselves, but for others as well. The book is Big Miracles, The 11 Spiritual Rules for Ultimate Success. If you would like to get more information about Joanna and her work, you can visit her website, joannagarzilli.com. Joanna, in about 30 seconds or less, what's the takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? Go for your big miracle. Your big miracle is the thing that is your deepest desire in your heart, and you deserve it. And Whatever it is you, that you think that you can't, or that someone would say, who do you think to go for that thing? Just go for it, because you will then be an inspiration to others. Joanna, thank you so much for being here with us and for providing tools to help us create the outcomes we desire. I agree with you. We all deserve a big miracle. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Joan. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7 Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read our digital magazine, take part in the book club, check out our team, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.